What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And boy, oh boy, does it feel good to have football back. And does it feel good to have a victory Monday? The Jacksonville Jaguars ended their season last year with a victory over the Indianapolis Colts. And they started the 2020 campaign with a victory over the Indianapolis Colts. And I let, I wouldn't say you guys, I would say the YouTube fan base for the most part, has been very optimistic. You guys, you know, left comments in my preview video saying, Treeb, you just got to believe, you know, there's there's still some positive things about this team that you have to think about. And there's still some promising future. There's still some people on this team with a promising future. And, you know, Gardner Minshew does not want to lose. So you just got to believe, you know, this is a team that can still win football games. And, you know, I let kind of the pessimistic side of Twitter and Facebook, you know, kind of just get to me and really ruin my thoughts on what this football team could really, really be. But I really should have listened to you guys, and I will eat the crow on that, and I will gladly, anytime I think the Jaguars are going to lose and they win, I will gladly eat that crow 10 times out of 10. The Jaguars played phenomenal phenomenal football and we're going to talk about the ins the outs the good the bad the ugly in this recap we are back with a jaguars recap position grade and players of the week it's been too long and i'm glad we are back on the grind so without further ado ladies and gentlemen this is the jacksonville jaguars versus indianapolis colts week number one recap position grades and players of the week Let's start things off with talking about the offense like we always do in these videos. And let's start it off with talking about the leader of the offense, quarterback Gardner Minshew. And what a game did Gardner Minshew have. You know, you see the memes out there about the Jaguars tanking for Trevor Lawrence. And, you know, the uh, Michael Jordan documentary where he has a cigar in his hand and he says, at that point it was personal for me. I seen one where, you know, they had that and they put Gardner Minshew's face on it. And it said when they started talking about tanking for Trevor, it was personal for me. And you've really got to, you know, that's about the most accurate thing I have seen on the internet about this Jacksonville Jaguar team tanking for Trevor. Boy, oh boy, does Gardner Minshew look like a franchise quarterback. You can read any of my tweets. You can, you know, go back and see anything that I have said. This is Gardner Minshew's team. And Gardner Minshew is the face of the Jacksonville Jaguar franchise. And, you know, like I said in my season preview, and like I said, you know, when the Jaguars traded away Leonard Fournette, you know, the Jags can tank all they want, but Gardner Minshew is not going to let you, like, lose enough games to the point where you're going to get that number one overall pick, you're going to get the second overall pick, and you're going to have to take a quarterback because Gardner Minshew does not lose games. You know, the reason that the Jaguars are going to lose games is not going to be because of Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew is going to play damn near perfect football every single time he steps on that field, and he's going to make sure that the Jaguars are in the perfect position to win football games, and that is exactly what he did in this game. That man threw 19, he went 19 for 21, 173, and three touchdowns. That's not a whole lot of yards, but you look at the Jay Gruden offense, you know, what Jay Gruden does. It's a West Coast offense, dink and dunk, get that ball out of, get that ball out of your hands as quick as possible, and that's exactly what Gardner Minshew did. Something else that I really, really loved out of Gardner Minshew is just, just, you can tell in game, you know, not even just going back and looking at the film, you can tell during the game just how well he goes through his progression, like, you can literally see his eyes moving, like, in the pocket, and you never see, you've never seen that with a Jaguars quarterback in this modern era, you know, Bortles, Gabbard, Foles, you know, you've never seen that, and then, you know, to see, you know, this quarterback really kind of go through his progression, take the open man, and, you know, 19 times out of 20, it's the best case scenario. I mean, the one drop was to Vishka Chenault, and, you know, it was in a, it was in a heavy traffic area in Vishka. It was in his hands. You know, he still could have caught that pass, but unfortunately he dropped it. So, I mean, Gardner, for all, you know, argumentative purposes, could have gone 20 for 20. Like, he could have completed every single pass. Gardner Minshew is also now the first quarterback in NFL history to complete 95% of his passes and throw three touchdowns. Like, this is a guy that is your franchise quarterback that will win you games and clearly believes, and, and I mean, clearly a guy that this team believes in. I mean, DJ Chark said it best in his press conference, you know, earlier this week. 
when they voted him captain, you know, it shows that this team believes in him and that they want him to be their quarterback. You know, they don't wish they were playing for another team. They don't wish that, you know, somebody else was going to be that quarterback. Gardner Minshew is the Jacksonville Jaguar quarterback. And, you know, like I said, you know, he's building tremendous, tremendous chemistry with all of these guys. He completed a pass to, let's see now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Out of his 19 completions, he threw it to 10 different targets. Uh, this is a guy that has built chemistry with every single pass catcher on his on his football team. And when you got a guy like that that can build that kind of chemistry with everybody on the roster, you have a quarterback that can lead you. I got into a conversation with a guy at my work who is also a Jaguars fan, and he said, you know, this could be almost like, you know, kind of a Patriots situation, a Tom Brady situation. You know, we don't, they don't necessarily have all these big names, but if you maybe throw Gardner Minshew in a situation where you have guys that kind of fit his skill set, fit the scheme that the team is trying to run, and Gardner Minshew, man, could probably be like a top 10, top 15 quarterback in the NFL, be really, really successful. And I'm starting to really believe that, especially with how some of these wide receivers played. And, you know, we'll dive more into that when we talk about those wide receivers and we uh, grade those wide receivers. But as far as the quarterbacks go, I mean, as far as Gardner Minshew goes, you know, not the quarterbacks, because, you know, Gardner Minshew is really the only guy that uh, <laughs> was the only guy to throw the ball, you know. And he did well, you know, when he had to escape the pocket and run the ball, had five rushes for 19 yards. Um he did his thing, and Gardner Minshew is going to get an A-plus on the day. I mean, there's literally nothing else you can do. Like, that is an A-plus game for a quarterback. And in the three years now that I've been doing recaps, position grades, and all that, I don't think any quarterback has ever gotten an A-plus from me. And Gardner Minshew is the first one to do it. And I think Gardner Minshew definitely, definitely deserves that A-plus. Now talking about the running backs. And James Robinson, man, like... I think this is the guy that every Jags fan was the most excited to see, at least on the offensive side of the ball to start the season, because, you know, we really didn't know what we were going to get out of him. I mean, they waved Leonard Fournette. That was supposed to be the dagger in the Jaguars season. Why the hell did they do that? And, you know, Raquel Armstead's on the COVID-19 list, and, they, you know, then they thought, you know, Chris Thompson was going to be in there, which, by the way, when Chris Thompson was in there, I was not, I was not peaked. You know, I was not peaked whatsoever by Chris Thompson you know I think some of the sacks that uh, were given up on the uh, <clears throat> in this game I think were Chris Thompson's fault I think uh, you know the pass protection was pretty good you know again we'll talk about that more at the offensive line but Chris Thompson I think in the three sacks that the offensive line gave up I, he was responsible for two of them I think so I was not I was not excited for Chris Thompson so I'm glad James Robinson came in, but what a debut for James Robinson. I mean, you know, coming into the game right off the bat in the first half, he had a tremendous first half. I mean, big runs, found the hole, accelerated through the hole. I mean, you did not see that kind of shit with Leonard Fournette. You know, Leonard Fournette ran into the back alignment, ran into the back alignment, never got really any big gains. But, you know, James Robinson was a breath of fresh air, really, you know, was a change of pace from what... Jaguar fans are used to seeing at the running back position. So that was a real, real fun time seeing James Robinson carry the ball. He ended the day with 16 carries for 62 yards, didn't break the plane. He only had a 3.9 yard average. I think in the second half, the uh, Colts kind of started to figure out James Robinson. I think that's going to be kind of a common trend as the season develops. I think more teams are going to, you know, game plan for Robinson and kind of figure him out a little bit more throughout the season, but that just means, you know, Robinson's going to have to keep improving and keep developing his game because, you know, in the second half again, he didn't do too much except for that big hurdle play, which, again, you know, that's a huge play in props to James Robinson. I think, you know, obviously that was a big play. Got the Jaguars to the uh, uh, touchdown pass from Gardner Minshew to Keelan Cole, which was huge. So, you know, I'm not taking I'm not taking anything away from that big play, but I think in the second half, you know, the Colts really kind of, started to crack down on Robinson and really kind of figured out what he was about and kind of figured out his game. So I think James Robinson had a really impressive debut. I'm not going to give him an A plus or really even an A. I'm going to give him a B plus. I think that, uh, like I said, in the opening couple series, he was really fun to watch. But uh, hopefully he can kind of keep that momentum up, keep that thing going strong, and, you know, make sure that he is, you know, a dynamic playmaker for the Jacksonville Jaguars and he can continue to be, 
somebody that this team can rely on heavy into the future. Now let's talk about the offensive line. And the offensive line, man, this was a, a group that I think personally I was really skeptical about. I was very, very skeptical. Oh, by the way, going back to the running backs too, LaVisha Chenault. Um, you know, Chris Thompson didn't even get any carries. LaVisha Chenault got two carries there too. So uh, Vishka got, a, you know, got some clout in the running game as well. But the offensive line, man, they did great. I thought they did really, really well. I mean, obviously, you know, gave up two, three sacks. But, uh, you know, I think one of them, you know, like I said, a couple of them I thought Chris Thompson could have held better, you know, in the – you know, at least dipping in a shoulder into a guy, you know, or doing something. But, you know, I think in two of them, I think Gardner Minshew kind of held on to the ball too long. But, you know, you kind of almost want that more for Minshew, you know, other than throwing a costly interception or something like that. But, you know, I think a lot of what the offensive linemen showed me was, you know, that they're improving and that they're doing good things. I mean, there wasn't I don't think that there was a single holding penalty. Like, I mean, I know that Brandon Linder on a big James Robinson run, you know, got that illegal hands to the face, and, you know, that neg neglected that big run. But other than that, I mean, the offensive line kind of held their own. They did their thing. They opened up run lanes for James Robinson. They gave Minshew enough time to, you know, survey. And like I said, you know, having a quarterback back there that has a high football IQ and really knows – what he's doing back there, you know, is going to help this offensive line tremendously. But this is a group that I think, again, you know, shot a lot of people and really played well and uh, played higher than expectations, you know, that were set for them. So this offensive line is going to get a B on the day. You know, again, they need to limit their sacks, obviously. But, I mean, you can't ask for a completely perfect game. You know, you're not going to be the Colts offensive line <laughs> every single time. It's just not going to happen. So... Um, the offensive line is going to get a B on the day. Hopefully they continue that momentum and, you know, just stay healthy. You know, just keep doing the damn thing. And finally, we're going to close off with these wide receivers, man. And they got open. They did their thing. And one guy I really want to, well, t two guys. Two guys I really want to highlight, and that is Vishka Chenault and Keelan Cole. Vishka Chenault, I think, is going to be, you know, exactly what we kind of planned him to be. A very, very dynamic player in the offense. You know, he lined up as a Wildcat quarterback. Um, he ran the ball a couple of times, and, you know, he caught a touchdown pass as a wide receiver, obviously. And early on in the game, on his first reception, you know, it took, like, the whole defense to really kind of wrap him up and make sure he didn't do anything explosive. But I'm very, very excited for him and very excited to see what he can do and this whole core as a whole man it's it's good it's a great group like it's exactly what i said you know with jason and jaguars united and i know too this video i think is going to go out before their live stream so make sure if you're watching this video right now and you intend on going to the jaguars united live stream make sure you flood the chat with tree was right just hashtag tree was right in the live stream jason will know what you're talking about because these wide receivers are deep, they're talented, and it's going to give Gardner Minshew loads of success. And a guy, the guy that I was the most impressed with was Keelan Cole. Because, I mean, Gardner was just finding it, man. Like, those short little zig routes. I mean, he was just doing everything um, possible to make Gardner's life easier. And I think that's just what all these guys are doing, really. is just making Gardner Minshew's life a lot easier. And it goes back to what I said earlier you know these guys aren't superstars you know not all these guys you know I would say DJ Chark really is the only guy that would you know be a number one wide receiver somewhere else but these are guys that fit the system well and I think that Gardner Minshew you know plays well with and you know that's that's all you need really you know you need to build an offense around a quarterback and I think that's how these wide receivers are and I said that in that video with Jason I think these wide receivers kind of fit to Gardner Minshew's strengths, so, um, and it showed in this game, you know, like, with nine of them, or ten of them getting a reception, I mean, that just shows that these guys are for real, and these guys are going to be a definite, definite factor, we're going to give a A for the wide receivers. Now, as far as a final grade for the offense, I mean, we did not see Logan Cook very much. And, you know, we seen Lambo and Lambo, man, and when he was out there, kicked a field goal. I mean, it was crazy, dude. Lambo went out there, and he, like, kicked, like, a fit, like that 50-yard field goal, and the announcers were still talking. They're like, oh, it's good. You know, it's funny. Like, that Colts kicker missed that 38-yard field goal. 
Um, it's so funny. Like, Lambo's so automatic. Like, it just doesn't even matter. Lambo's just so automatic. Love Josh Lambo. Didn't give him a grade, but it'd be an A, obviously, because he's just the GOAT. Best, best kicker in the league, no doubt about it. But this offense as a whole is going to get an A on the day for me. Um, I don't, I don't really have much else to say other than the offensive line. I think outperformed expectations. These wide receivers were there for Gardner Minshew. James Robinson was really, really fun to watch. And Gardner Minshew did the damn thing. Went 19 for 20, completed 95% of his passes, and threw three touchdowns to go along with it. Now, did the defense perform just as well? All right, now we're going to be talking about the defense. Now, I think the defense kind of got a lot more credit than I would hand out the defense. I think, personally, a lot of individuals did well. I think that um, more individuals' games stuck out than, you know, like a whole group. That's why I think... Um, the group grades are going to be a lot lower than what you may expect. And, you know, there are still some individuals, I think, that had a really good game, and we'll talk about those individuals. But as far as the whole defense goes, man, I mean, you got to you, – you, you can't overlook. Like, I mean, I think the run defense is something that we can all agree as a whole did phenomenal. I think our run defense played way, way better – from a season ago, and I hope that momentum carries over to next week, because obviously, you know, the Colts have a mix of Hines, Mack, Taylor, you know, they got a three running back, you know, trio that, you know, all three of them are going to get carries, you know, that's just the way she goes. Next week, you know, you got Derrick Henry, and you know, Derrick Henry is, you know, a premier running back, top five in the league, and you know, we always have a hard time against Derrick Henry, so hopefully that momentum can carry over, but that's one thing I will say. The run defense looked phenomenal. But, I mean, you can't overlook, like, the fact that Phillip Rivers, man, 363 yards. He did throw the two interceptions, but, I mean, those those two picks, like, I would say anybody would have got those picks. Like, I don't want to be a pessimistic asshole because, I mean, we did get the win, and those were two, you know, great plays that ended up sealing the deal. And, you know, it was dope seeing C.J. Henderson get his first career pick as our first-round draft pick. And, you know, Andrew Wingard, obviously, you know, it's always cool when he makes a play. But, you know, it's just, you know, Phillip Rivers was kind of eyeing both those down, and, you know, the picks were there. So, and he still threw 363 yards, and there's still, like, some dumb penalties that bailed him out. I mean, they're, the roughing the passer called DeJuan Smoot when the Colts ran to the line and they weren't going to run a play, but Phillip Rivers still got smooth to jump off sides. I mean, that whole eight-minute drive, there was, I think, two pass interference calls and a holding call. I mean, DJ Hayden, too. DJ Hayden and DeJuan Smoot got ate up by defensive penalties. Early in the game, I mean, there were, like, no penalties, and I think the announcers in the game even said that, and I said it, too, when I was watching it, you know, that there weren't a whole lot of penalties, and then just right after that, there's just a ton of them. And, you know, most of them came on our defensive side of the ball. But overall, I'd say the, the run defense played really well. But, you know, there's still some kinks to be worked out on the defensive side of the ball. For example, like letting one type of play or one exactly same play kill us every single time. Like, the screens, bro, like, I get the Colts are just behemoths on the offensive line. I get it. But when they run... Like, a screen every time, and they're still getting 20, 30 yards out of it every single freaking time, bro. Like, you you can't let that happen. Like, we got we to gotta be better than that. You know what I mean? So, there still were some Jacksonville Jaguar, like, mistakes trinkled in there. But, overall, not too bad. So, let's go over some position groups for the defense. We're going to start things off with the defensive line. Um... Against the run, they did pretty well. Avery Jones really stuck out to me. Obviously, on that fourth down stop, you know, Avery Jones was, you know, credited with that. And I think him and uh, Taven Bryan as well, I thought, played well. Devon Hamilton, too. Devon Hamilton, you know, plugged up the middle very well. I think the interior defensive lineman, you know, played well against the run. Obviously, the pass rush wasn't there. They didn't sack Phillip Rivers at all. Josh Allen, obviously, was... Very close one time, and then, 
you know, he got hurt, and I think he'll he'll be back next week. And Clavon Chase on, obviously, you know, almost got that interception, but you know, I got called back unfortunately due to a penalty. Um, I didn't see too much from him, and you know, the defensive line I think did well against the run, but I mean, you gotta you gotta put pressure on the quarterback, and I think that's why Philip Rivers you know, did so well. Obviously, I think the defensive scheme wasn't the greatest. You know, the Jags are still playing under Todd Wash, and it's still, it still looks like a high school defensive system to me where, like, if you give a quarterback, it's exact, it's almost exactly what I said in the preview, and Phillip Rivers kind of had it and did it. I mean, he had, like, three, four, five seconds to throw, and he'd just find an open area in the defense somewhere, and that's exactly what he did, and it exposed the Jags for quite a bit, you know, and and that's like that's all I did, and you know you're not going to be able to really do anything like that unless you know you cause a pass rush. But again, they did pretty all right against the run, so I'm going to give the defensive line a C. Um, you know, again, I'd like to see some more pass rush, but guys like Avery Jones and Devon Hamilton, uh, Josh Allen did all right as well, and you know I'd like to see those guys you know step up a little bit more. Now let's talk about the linebackers, who I thought, Joe Schobert and Miles Jack, that might be a really, really, really good linebacking duo. Like, really good. Like, Miles Jack played out of his fucking mind. Like, <laughs> Miles Jack had a really, really good game. Um, he had a pass interference call against him as well. And, um, it was kind of bullshit, <laughs> because that pass interference call was, like, like, it was uncatchable to me. Like, that ball was not going to be caught, and, you know, he got called on that. And then, uh, the dude that flexed on him, he put his hands up. And you like to see that from Miles Jax. You know, Miles Jax is usually the guy getting, like, unsportsmanlike penalties. You know, you like to see him kind of put his hands up and make sure that he's not getting those calls. And, you know, making sure that he's not, uh, he's not going to be that guy. And uh, he was, you know, and he played well. Joe Schobert, too. I felt like Joe Schobert had his nose in about every single run play. And even, you know, when he, when it wasn't a run play, you know, he'd be chasing down plays, making sure that he was involved in the tackle. So I think, you know, Miles Jack and Joe Schobert, man, those are two guys that I think are going to be very, very big impact players on the defensive side of the ball this year. And I'm very excited to see what they do. And I think they were both uh, two very big standout players for the Jaguars in this one. And that's why I'm going to be giving them a B on the day for taking a Dr. Pepper break. I can only talk so long. I thought I'm getting a little choked up. So now we're going to talk about the secondary to wrap up the defensive grades. Now, it was weird because, you know, you had no Jalen Ramsey, you had no A.J. Boye. And, you know, you had guys like Clay, Clay Brooks and Trey Herndon out there. Who, and, you know, DJ Hayden, who, you know, initially, like, a lot of people said, like, this is the best corner that the Jaguars have. <coughs> and it's like, he played like shit. <laughs> you know, like, you got, you got Clay, Brooks, Clay Brooks and Herndon playing better. Like, I mean... Eh, you know what I mean? I don't know. But uh, one guy we need to shout out, and I think an obvious shout out is needed, C.J. Henderson. They were testing this man all game long, and this man delivered. An interception, three pass breakups. Like this, you know, and it was a guy I questioned in my preview video. I said, dude, I don't know how I like, you know, a rookie corner going up against one of the league's best, but he shut him down. And, you know, we're going up against Tennessee next week. He's going to be going up against a young guy like A.J. Brown. Like, I mean, he should be able to lock that down, essentially, and, you know, the secondary should play well. I mean, and then you got guys like Josh Jones, who I thought Josh Jones played well, too. You know, I thought he was in a lot of tackles. He was in a lot of plays. Uh, Jared Wilson played all right. I think he did a, He was more of a special team. He did more on special teams, I think, than, uh, than in the secondary. But I'm really, really impressed with C.J. Henderson and uh, what he did for this defense, you know, I'm blown away. I think, you know, between him, Miles Jack, and uh, Joe Schober, it's gonna be it's gonna be very very hard to give out a player of the week out of those three. 
um, for the defense because I really think all three of those guys had tremendous, tremendous weeks. But the secondary as a whole, again, Phillip Rivers, you know, he did throw all those yards, but I think a lot of it, lack of a pass rush. Um, and, yeah, I mean, they did get two picks, essentially. But I'm going to be giving them a B- minus just because I think C.J. Henderson really kind of levitated that game. As far as the defensive line, I mean, Avery Jones played well against the run, but I don't think it was well enough to kind of boost their grade up from a C. So, um, yeah, we're going to give them a B- minus on the day. C.J. Henderson balled out, played really well for this young and experienced. Now time for the defense's overall grade. I'm going to be giving this defense a B minus on the day. The linebackers, CJ Henderson, the secondary, and if we can get a pass rush too, I think this defense is going to be all right. Dare I say, I mean, it's not Saxonville. It's far from it, but I mean, it's average. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's not, it's not a, it's not a defense that uh, is really insane. But I mean, you got. You got some guys on there, man. Like, now now that the season's going on, I mean, I'm really hopping on the bandwagon of some guys. Like, C.J. Henderson, man. Joe Schobert, Miles Jack. Like, you know, Josh Allen, man. I'm really – Avery Jones, too. I think Avery Jones is a leader. Like, I, Josh Jones, too. I'm a little – I'm a little excited to see how he develops a little bit. So, we're going to be giving them, you know, a B-minus on the day. And hopefully this defense continues to develop and – I'm very, very excited for that. And finally, my favorite time of the week, your favorite time of the week, and your mom's favorite time of the week, player of the week and on offense. I think there's no doubt about it. I want to give it to Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew, 19 for 23 touchdowns, first quarterback in NFL history to complete 95% of his passes and throw three touchdowns. That was a no-brainer for me. Runner-up was Keelan Cole. Um, Keelan Cole, man, I mean, James Robinson, too. I mean, it's a little bit of a thought, but Keelan Cole. Bro, that's impressive. You know, that's a guy that uh, the other day one of my, my buddies was like, is Keelan Cole even still on your roster? And it's like, well, now you know. <laughs> you know, now you know he is. So he's going to get the Offensive Player of the Week. As far as the Defensive Player of the Week, like I said, it was going to be hard between uh, Schobert, Miles Jack, and uh, C.J. Henderson So I thought all three of them had incredible games. But I'm going to be giving it to C.J. Henderson, man. I mean, give that kid the game ball. He uh, got that pass breakup to end the game. He got his first career interception, and he did the damn thing. I think that it's only right that you give him the Defensive Player of the Week, and hopefully he gets many, many more to come, ladies and gentlemen. And that was my Jaguars versus Colts recap, position grades, and Players of the Week. What you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Dream Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Dream Talks, or follow me on Instagram, at Trey. Fawn Pixley. Don't forget, you can hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new videos on this channel three days a week. Ain't nobody outworking me. Them just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.